We're back with our guest host, Rob Tetro. He's head of the Tetro Wealth Advisory Group at Canaccord Judity, based in Winnipeg, but we've got the benefit of his uh, expertise this morning in Toronto. Okay, you are trimming client portfolios. You're planning to uh, by about 10%, I understand, because you think uh, now's the time to take some risk off the table. Yeah, I just feel like, you know, market all, markets being at all-time highs, Paul, for me, are not a necessary indicator that we need to cut. In fact, I think it's a very strong bullish signal, historically, when markets hit all-time highs. But when markets are hitting all-time highs and PDE ratios, like I think our, our forward PDE is, you know, we're in the 20s now and, and our, our trailing 12 PDE is in the mid-20s. Uh, we're looking almost a standard deviation and a half away from historical norms, maybe even almost two standard deviations, I think. Uh, that's starting to get a little scary. And then what, what really bugs me is the, the just the nonchalance with respect to the, the laissez-faire attitude with respect to everything that's happening globally, Paul. Like, I, you know, you get a plane that's shot down with a country admitting to shooting it down and the markets don't even blink. Like, we just get another 100, 200 points. It's just, it's starting to, it's starting to get to the point where de-risking makes sense and we're looking at it and we're, we're likely going to do that this month. And how will you approach that? Every client portfolio is different. Every client is different, uh, more to the point. Uh, how, how will you proceed to tr trim some exposure and where would you do the trimming in terms of sectors? Yeah, so I'm, we're going to trim across the board, likely more in Canada, but we're going to trim across the board in equities. And it's not a simple uh, process. You know, we, it's not a mutual fund that we run. So it's, it's actual custom individualized portfolio. So we have to do it on a one-off basis. We have to do it per account. You're right, every client is different. So for some of them, the move is going to be from equities just straight to fixed income, whether it's traditional fixed income or, or pref shares or, or private debt, something like that. And for others, it's going to be from equities to alternatives um, like private real estate or, or, you know, liquid alts or something like that, where we're just trying to get less volatility. And, you know, we're telling clients, what I'm telling clients is if in the next year or so, you know, we end up making eight or nine on our alternative bucket and the market does 20, you know, are we okay with that decision, de-risking and, and doing that? And, and the response I'm getting from clients and how we feel is that that does make sense. So it's a move that's going to be happening over, over the next month or so. And uh, I just, I feel it's prudent. I'm okay with de-risking. I'm okay with leaving some money on the table here. What happens to the proceeds then? So they go either to fixed income and they go to alts. And then that's a trade we can put back on. Like mm -hmm. in December 2018, uh, we made four, the, the week before Christmas, we made 4,000 trades where we were, we were um, in our clients' portfolios where we were, either reversing that trade, so putting putting back the alts into the equities, and that's that's kind of a trade you can do with, with some of the, these alts that are liquid. So if we do see a pullback, Paul, we'll be ready to go. Talk to us about alts, alternative investments. What what uh, kind of vehicles are you talking about? Yeah, there's a lot on the street about alts, and it's it's gotten kind of sexy in the last year or two with the liquid alts and the half, the fact that you don't have to have a, um, you know accredited investors and you can do it directly through a mutual fund now. I believe alts should, you need first of all, you need to understand your alts if you do own them. I believe in owning private private real estate as a, as a fantastic alternative, very low volatility, extremely tax efficient, Paul. And not only that, but they're generally very low correlated or uncorrelated to traditional stock markets. So if you can get those three bumps and, you know, if we make, again, if we make eight or nine or maybe you get a good year and you make 12 in your alt space and the market does zero or it does 20, for me, it's, it's a, it's a de-risker and it's a, it reduces volatility. What type of vehicle or what type of security is, uh, are you getting exposure to private real estate in? Usually we'll do it through a, um, a private uh, prospectus offering, offer, prospectus issued offering memorandum, a credit investor issue. So there's a, you know, there's a whole bunch that exists. It's very important to do the due diligence on these and you don't want to just pick up anything because management's extremely important. Uh, management's important, st strategy's important, and structure's important. So we, we deal with private REITs that are typically either traded as a private pool or sometimes they'll even trade as a fund. Um, and then you, you can, they're liquid usually, 30 days or 60 days liquidity and it provides great, great, great uh, reduction in volatility for portfolios. That's Rob Tetro on how he is going to take some risk off the table on behalf of his clients. Let's take a look at some earnings that the market is expecting this week. Earnings in the U.S. ramp up in a big way. Tomorrow is the beginning of bank earnings season in the U.S. Three big U.S. banks, including Citigroup, will report earnings. J.P. Morgan and Wells Fargo also due to report earnings uh, tomorrow. Citigroup, J.P. Morgan and, uh, and Wells Fargo all due to report earnings. In Canada, we'll get Afria, one of the big cannabis uh, producers. It's due to report earnings as well. And Kojiko, another company reporting on Wednesday. 
uh, later in the week. Charles Schwab uh, uh, will uh, get uh, set to report results. It, of course, has made a major acquisition recently involving TD Ameritrade. Bank of America will also report results on Wednesday, and Goldman. So it's a heavy, heavy week for uh, bank earnings on, uh, on uh, Tuesday. Tomorrow, J.P. Morgan, Citigroup, and Wells Fargo. The following day on Wednesday, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, and Morgan Stanley all due to report results. Six uh, bank results across uh, two days, and CSX also due to report results on Wednesday. That is uh, one of the big U.S. Uh, rail companies. What will you be watching for in, uh, in U.S. earnings? Oh, a busy week for those banks. Uh, well, obviously, we're going to be watching the beat factor. We're going to be watching, uh, you know, the margins. I always keep an eye on the margins, and especially on the, on the banks, the delinquencies, and, you know, what kind of reporting, what kind of lo loan loss provisions they're giving uh, f for that side, because that's obviously a leading indicator. And the bankruptcies, you know, we talked about it with Patty Lovett Reed earlier. It's a number that is on the rise, and that's that's something we have to keep our eye on because bankruptcies reduce GDP, they stop spending, it's just not good. What kind of exposure do you have for clients in the financials right now, Canada or the US? Uh, we've always, I don't want to say always, but we've historically been overweight financials uh, on both sides. We're generally underweight Canada overall right now and we're overweight US and global. Uh, financials I'd say would be slight overweight US, slight overweight Canada relative to their index, overweight US and global. And we mentioned the CSX, the big US rail, also due to report do you have rail exposure, uh, CNCP, or a U.S. rail company? Yeah, we we we're in, we have been in and out of, of rail companies. Uh, I think they make they they were making a lot of sense given what was happening with the, the Western Canada and the pipelines. Their volume was just up dramatically over the last two years, so uh, we played that a little bit. Um, I, I, we're not we're not in now, and I don't know if we'll be in in the near future. Uh, but it's something that makes sense from time to time in our portfolios. It's Rob Tetro on reducing risk, and also his view of U.S. earnings getting set to dial up in a big way tomorrow and through the course of the week.